welcome to two types of inference. Uh, so we have talked about that we can estimate a population parameter using sample statistics, and we can also uh, test claims. So confidence intervals are designed for making estimate for estimating population parameters. So confidence intervals are designed for estimating population parameters. Um, the idea is that we take the sample statistic which may not be the same as the population parameter, use that as our base estimate and give ourselves some wiggle room. So we use a sample statistic as our base estimate. Uh, and then give ourselves some wiggle room. Which we will be calling the margin of error. So as we have seen, sample statistics are not always exactly the same as the population parameter. In fact, they're rarely exactly the same as the population parameter, but they are typically close to the population parameter. So if we have, here's our sample statistics. So for example, our P hat on our number line, then we go over by a mar error margin in one direction and over by our error mar margin of error in the other direction. And we create an interval where we guess that our uh, population parameter falls. So typically we go out by our margin of error. by our margin of error. And then we have an interval estimate. So we guess the, the population parameter falls within an interval. So some things to keep in mind, um, the wider the interval, the more likely it is that the population parameter will actually fall in the interval, just because we've given ourselves more room for, for error. So the wider the interval, the more likely it contains the true population proportion. Uh, but the um, at the same time, the wider the interval, the less informative it is.
For example, if I tell you that between 20 and 80% of individuals um, go to college, right? That's a huge range. Between 20 and 80% doesn't really give us that much information. 20% going to college is only a fifth of the population. 80% going to college is four fifths of the population. Um, so that's not very informative, but it has a high chance of having the actual answer somewhere in there. Um, so confidence intervals, we try to balance um, sort of the chances of our being correct with the not wanting to be too wide so that it's just a boring statement that doesn't tell us much. So confidence intervals aim to balance. Please. Um, it turns out if we take a larger sample, we can get smaller intervals. So larger samples produce smaller intervals. Uh, we saw this when we were talking about the p hat distribution. When we took larger samples, the standard error or the standard deviation of our sampling distribution was smaller. Um, and so the p hats were closer to the actual proportion. So larger samples will produce smaller intervals. And then the confidence interval comes with a confidence level. Uh, which tells us sort of the likelihood that our method will produce an interval containing the true population proportion. our method of um, uh, following through with the study. So our method of sampling and then using the sample results. So our method of sampling and creating the confidence interval. Well, yield results are a result that contains the true population proportion. Um, next up, we have testing a claim. So in testing a claim, oh, sorry, this is, I should have said hypothesis testing. Uh, which we use for testing a claim. So a hypothesis testing is used to test a claim. Um, so we have some fact or statement that we wish to view if it's true or not. Um, 
in hypothesis testing, oh, for hypothesis testing, we have sort of a base hypothesis or assumption about a population parameter. And then we use a sample, uh, we take a sample and we determine if those sample results are sort of expected or surprising um, if the base assumption were true. So it turns out if the sample results were expected, then there's really not much we can say. Um, we cannot ever prove that a population proportion is exactly some value unless we are able to reach the entire population. Um, so if the sample results were expected, then we're, uh, we cannot toss out the base assumption, but we also have not proven it. So if the sample results were expected, then we can draw no conclusions. So we have no evidence or insufficient evidence that the base assumption was wrong. But we also have not shown that it, it's, that it was correct. Uh, if the sample results were surprising, then that is considered to be strong evidence that our base assumption was wrong. Now note that I have not again stated we are con we are absolutely 100% confident the base assumption was wrong, just that we have strong evidence of it being so. Um, so these were just sort of verbal explanations of what confidence intervals and hypothesis tests uh, allow us to do. In the next videos, we will look more deeply into confidence intervals.